Oh, hey guys, this is Vince with Green Joe Coffee Trucks. So today I wanted to discuss a little bit about how to find coffee. I get that question a lot, like where do you find your coffee at? How do you get coffee? This one for me, it's, I love looking for new coffee. It's one of the parts of the coffee industry that I really enjoy. It's a little easier for me just because I enjoy it so much. But for some of you that are just getting started in coffee trucking or a coffee shop or, or whatever that is, it can be stressful. Like, hey, where do you find good coffee from? Quality coffee, like what are the different types of coffee out there? and and, and how do I source it? So I'm gonna give you a few tips and basically the first thing that I'm gonna recommend is if you're in a decent sized city is to looking at your local roasters. Uh, most of the time, buying from your local roaster uh, could really benefit you in price, quality, and uh, also in getting the exact type of coffee that you, that you enjoy. When you go to try a new roaster, you can do a couple different ways. You can call them up and request a cupping and uh, cupping is where essentially they line up all their different coffees and prepare them for you and you get to try them out. It's kind of like taste testing at a winery. You bring some crackers and water with you and you taste a little bit and then, you know, cl cleanse your palate and taste some more. And within an hour you have jitters, you know, so you have cuppings, which are, I, I really enjoy cuppings. They're fun. If you are going to do cuppings, one of the things that I would encourage is to always, you know, and I get this from my time in the military, you, you, you train as you are, you know, you, you do in training as you do in war. So what that means is you, you, you want to try to replicate your training as, as much as you can to what you're going to see in the real world. And for us in coffee trucking, that means, you know, things like paper cups and kind of think about, for me, I look at the behavior of my consumer. Most of the time, if they're getting coffee from me, it's on their way to work or something like that. And so they're going to come by, they're going to pick up my coffee, they're going to take a sip of it, add cream or sugar if they need it. And then usually after that, they set it into the coffee cup holder and let it cool off because it's usually, you know, 180 degrees or something, right? So they drive their way to work and sit down, get their soap settled in, start nursing on that cup of coffee. So most of the time when your customer really starts judging whether or not your coffee is, is if they like it or not it's usually five ten minutes after they've purchased the coffee from you and you'll be amazed at how much a coffee profile the flavor profiles will change within that time so when I'm setting up my cuppings I really want to set up my cuppings in that arena I, I do uh, paper cups and then we pour the coffee and then I don't I'll try it right away that's fine I don't mind that but I wait I set it off to the side for five minutes I let it cool down a little bit and then I go back and try it again and I the first time I did this I was so 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 surprised because the coffee that I originally thought was the best was not the best at five minutes and the coffee that I thought was number two turned out to be the best at five minutes so I had to kind of redesign my thoughts about that so anyways and the same goes for cold you know when you're doing iced coffee kind of think about that like if any of you have downloaded my cold brew recipe from the starter guide on my website it's free if you want it I'm just gonna do a little drop there. Um, you just go to my website. I have a free starter guide where I have like floor plans, what equipment you might need, you know, the top 10 pieces of advice as a, a beginning coffee trucking. And in there, I give you my cold brew recipes. Well, anyways, going back, when I make my cold brew recipe, you'll notice that I slightly under dilute, meaning I don't bring it to full strength. And the reason I do that is because when you put ice inside the coffee, the ice is gonna create some dilution you're adding water to the coffee so I serve it slightly strong so that as they go on about their day and they get to that five ten minutes of wherever they need to be and get they get to work so to speak and start drinking their coffee well now the ice has melted a little bit and so the coffee is exactly where I want it to be so just a little tips of the trade from me and just trying to hone in on my particular craft. I want to kind of share those with you folks. So when I'm setting up my cuppings, that's what I like to do. I like to set up my cuppings to best mimic the environment in which my consumer is going to be drinking my, my coffee. Okay, cool. So you call up all your local roasters and you can set up cuppings. Now that's time consuming. Some of you may not want to do that. Some of you may know exactly how you like to brew coffee. That's the other thing. Usually I like to brew my cold brew a little bit different than everybody else. I do a, a 18 hour extraction. Most people do a 24 hour extraction. So if I were to use the roasters recipe for cold brewing, it's not going to be the way that I serve my cold brew. So sometimes it's better to just get a bag of coffee from them and then go brew it on your own. Anyway, so you call up all your local roasters, get local coffee from them, try that out, get the prices from them. See, and the prices are always negotiable too because they'll give you your first list of pricing, but if you can guarantee a certain amount of purchases, then sometimes they'll alter that. And here's a little trade secret. So they have to purchase coffee as well. And when they purchase coffee, they 
purchase it in a pallet, which is a very large amount of coffee. And sometimes they don't want to float a whole pallet because maybe they don't use that much of that particular coffee. Maybe they just don't want to invest that much, or maybe there's another type of coffee that they want to spend their money on. But sometimes you can go in on a pallet with your roaster. You know, sometimes there's like uh, storage fees they might charge you for them. They may not charge you for storage fee. But the benefit to them when you go in and in on a pallet with them, they don't have to cough up the entire cost of the pallet. And sometimes they get a price bake when they buy the pallet because they're buying in the bulk. And they may not give that price break to you necessarily, but the price that you'll get it at is significantly cheaper than when you buy it from them at retail. So something to keep in mind if you develop a good relationship with a roaster, you you know you're going to be with them for a while and you're looking to get the most inexpensive cost on beans, you may want to see if that's that's available. Now not everyone does that, but if if it is available, great, then march on. Okay, so going back to uh, local roasters, going through and checking each of your local roasters, they're going to have it cheaper than everybody else because they don't have to pay for shipping, okay? Like you can just get your coffee from them you know if you start buying outside of your town then you're going to start adding shipping cost to that whole equation which is going to increase your prices so it's always good to just stop and see if you can get it at without those extra costs now if you can't for whatever reason you're in a small town all your roasters suck whatever the deal is then from there the next step is to look at shipping costs and you have different regions of shipping say for example if you're doing usps they have um, regions that are close to you versus regions that are a little bit further the further you step out from your region the more expensive the, the shipping cost so the first step is to look at your region and to see what coffee roasters are within that region you know you call them up you say you know, hey, my name is Vince. I'm with Green Joe Coffee. I'm uh, opening up a coffee truck and we're interested in a wholesale. Is there any way that you can send me out a bag of coffee and your prices? Most of the time, roasters will send out a bag for free. And sometimes they'll be like, yeah, you got to pay for shipping. They'll comp the prices. They want you to try their stuff. So I always enjoyed that because then, you know, you're trying free coffee. It's new coffee from different places, you know, so it's, I really like that aspect. But anyways, going back to the original thing. So then what I like to do is I just check that region. I'm in Albuquerque, right? So then I'm going to be looking at places like El Paso, Phoenix, Denver, Amarillo, things within my region because that keeps my shipping costs down. And usually what you want to look at is things like five pound bags, right? How much does it cost to ship five pounds, not two pounds? Or, you know, if you take care of coffee well, then you can easily have coffee last two to three weeks. You know, if you keep it in an airtight container that doesn't allow light in and those type of things. Now they got those pump containers where you can remove uh, the O2 from the uh, environment. So that'll even preserve it even longer, which is great. Uh, the next thing is to do is just look at the shipping regions and start finding roasters within that region. And then, you know, from there, you, you find a coffee that you enjoy. My favorite coffees, if it helps you, because there's so many out there. And if you're new to this, you go, it can be overwhelming, right? I remember feeling overwhelmed by all these different varieties and roast types and stuff. To make it simple, um, I really like Colombian coffee and I really like Brazilian coffee. And those are the two number one imports to America. Uh, if you're in the U.S., you've most likely tasted a Colombian or a Brazilian. In fact, you're probably drinking one now because those are the greatest imports. And I always liked uh, having familiar coffee to my customers. I feel like, you know, people taste it and it's not, I mean, exotic coffee is great, but really consistency is key when it comes to coffee. So I always like to have coffees that people are t kind of familiar with. And Colombians and Brazilians are, are my two favorite. The other thing about those two coffees is they're, they're really easy to brew. The bean sizes are all the same and that just has to do with um, how the coffees are processed versus like African beans. You got a lot of variety in the, the bean sizes and stuff. So with these ones, the roasters have a nice consistent roast. So I really like those beans for that reason. Anyways, kind of going back, Colombians, Brazilians, I like those medium to medium dark. Now some of you folks out there like light roast. It's awesome. Do your thing. Um, it's not for me. Uh, personally, I like the mediums. The uh, African coffees, my two favorites are Congo and Ethiopian. Uh, those ones I typically like to go medium, medium dark to be very specific, full city, full city plus, maybe even Vienna. So those are my favorite coffees. And so usually when I am trying to uh, talk to a roaster about what coffee they have, I try those ones first. And so I like to get a, an idea on that. It's kind of like, you know, if you go to, to an Italian place, the first thing you want to do is try their chicken Parmesan. It's almost like a screener, you know, like if your chicken Parmesan is good, then I'll move on to the lasagna. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. So it's the same thing for me with coffee. It's like, let me try your Colombian. Let me try your Brazilian. See how those are. If I like 
like them, then we'll move on to some of the more exotic things. Um, nice baseline to kind of get started with. So yeah, I think that's all I got for you as far as like trying out the coffees and getting started with cupping and learning where to, to source coffee from. I'm super excited. I'm in some talk right now with uh, with the roaster to see if we can start offering coffee, but it's just talk right now. So if we do, I'll put it up on the website, okay? My name is Vince. I'm with Green Joe Coffee Truck. Uh, jump over to the website if you want that starter guide. Thanks for tuning in.